Welcome biologists. In this session, we're going to talk about the student's t-test. Now in previous videos, and I'll post a link in the description below, we've looked at what standard deviation is. So standard deviation is the spread of data around the mean and it excludes the extreme values. So that's the green data here. Anything in a red box is taken directly from the MART scheme. We really need to know what that is. Now you can calculate your standard deviation and the mean of a set of data using your calculator, which is on the other video, which I've just mentioned and will be in the description below. I highly advise you learn how to do this so it's easy for you to do in the exam. So a t-test is better than a standard deviation because it's more accurate. It allows a more valid comparison of my data sets. And um, the reason for this is because it allows you to see there's a significant difference between two means. It allows you to compare two means. Now, there are two types of t-tests. Good news is, is that you don't need to learn this formula, you just need to learn how to use it. So the formula is provided in the exam. The unpaired t-test is between two sets of data that are unrelated. So for example, the number of flowers in a field near your college compared to a field elsewhere. Whereas a paired t-test would be um, where the data sets are related. So for example, the number of flowers in the school field in the summer and then the number of flowers in the school field in spring for example. Um, now I'm going to talk through how to use both of these but this is the most popular t-test on your exam. I've never ever seen a paired t-test in an exam before, only the unpaired t-test. So this is what the formula is and what the different parts are that you need to be aware of and I'll demonstrate how to use that now. So here's a set of data where I've got snail shells on an upper shore and snail shells on the rocky shore. So the first thing I need to do with my data sets is find out the mean and the standard deviation. Again, using your calculator for this is the easiest way to do so. So here is my mean and my standard deviation. If you want to pause the video and give, a sh give it a shot now in putting that data into the formula to work it out, it might be a good idea. So here is my formula. And if I input my data, so I've got my two means there, I'm taking my mean away from each other. And then I'm dividing that by my standard deviation squared over 10, adding that onto my other standard deviation squared over 10, 10 being the number of samples that I have. And that gives me 5.9912. Now in an exam, you might be expected to then determine using that t-test result, if your result is a significant or not. So are my means significantly different or not? And to use that, you have to use a table like this. So first thing is I need to look at the correct degrees of freedom. And then I compare my t-test to my critical value at 5%. So at 5%, what we're saying here, if my value lies to this side, so if my value, my t-test value is higher than my critical value, what I am saying there is that there's a less than 5% chance that the differences between my means is is due to chance okay so i'm looking at my five percent uh, value so if my number my t-test value lies to this side there is a significant difference between my means i reject my null hypothesis which is that there is no significant difference between my means i reject that and i accept my hypothesis which in this case my hypothesis would be there is a difference between the height of the snail shells at the rocky shore and the upper shore and um, so if my value lies to this side it's the opposite so let's have a look what our value means. So our t-test value is 5.9912. My degrees of freedom is 18. So 10 minus 1 plus 10 minus 1 is 18. So I'm looking at this degrees of freedom here. And this is my critical value. So then at, what you need to do in your exam is you need to compare your t-test value to your critical value. So this is me comparing it. So 5.9912 is greater than my critical value of 2.0. 101. Therefore, there is a significant difference between the mean heights, heights in stale shells between the two areas. I reject my null hypothesis and accept my hypothesis. It's really important that we state this bit and we also state this bit here and we also relate it to the actual data that we're talking about. In my paired t-test, here I have two data sets that are related, so it's the same person before and after exercise. First thing you need to do is find out the differences between the two sets of data. I then need to find the mean of this data and the standard deviation. Again, use a calculator. And then I plug it into the formula. So here I have it. That is the data plugged in. And then that is my t-test result. Again, I then need to look that up on a table. So my degrees of freedom is 10 minus 1. So I'm looking at 9. I plug in my data. That's my critical value. And I compare my t-test value to it. So that's everything you need to know on the t-test. Good luck with your results. 